Hello, my friends, and welcome to episode 18 of the Earth Tones Girl podcast. My name is Denise, and I am coming to you today from my home in Yonkers, New York, where I live with my husband and our two children. You can find me on the internet as Earth Tones Girl. I am most active on Instagram. I'm also on Ravelry. And I have an email address, or the podcast has an email address, which is earthtonesgirl at gmail.com. We also have a Ravelry group. I say we, I don't know why, but I have a Ravelry group. Um, it's the Earth Tones Girl podcast group. So come on over and join the fun. There's going to be some fun things happening there soon, but I'm going to talk about that in a second. So welcome back. I'm back. It has been a month. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe that it has been four weeks since my last podcast. Summer has been wonderful. Um, I said in my last podcast that I've made peace with the summer, not so much the heat because it's been a little bit crazy. Um, I really can't stand the heat. I'm over it, but I have made peace with the summer. The kids and I have been so busy. Every day it's a new adventure. We are really having fun. Um, I think everyone's starting to get a little restless now as summer is winding down. I think everyone needs that return to routine. Uh, I know that I do. So um, right now we're just sort of taking it easy. We just got back from a couple of days out in Long Island at the beach and that was absolutely wonderful. Um, I'll try to put some footage of that in here maybe in the beginning. You'll, you'll would have seen it already. Uh, I feel so out of practice. It's been four weeks. Uh, I have missed being here. I've missed talking to you all. Uh, there is so much to share in this episode. Um, I, I can't wait to get started. So yeah, to, I also want to say to returning viewers, uh, thank you so very much for coming back and spending some more time with me and sticking with me. Again, I also think that once school starts back, uh, I'm going to have a lot more time um, and there's going to be a lot going on in the Ravelry group and with the podcast. Um, September is a big month for me. It's my birthday month. So we'll talk about all of that in a little while. But uh, I am hoping to be here on the channel a lot more. So fingers, toes, arms, legs, cross for that. And there's also going to be a lot of projects going on, a lot of cows. So yeah, lots of fun stuff. So again, I'm hoping to be here a lot more. And to any new viewers, thank you so much for giving me a try and spending some time with me. I hope that you enjoy this episode. Um, if you do at the end, please give a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications button so you know when a new episode comes up. And um, I hope that you enjoy. So you guys, I think we should jump into all of the stuff. <laughs> what the, the most important thing right now is to say a huge thank you, huge, huge, huge thank you to everyone who participated in the summer mitten cow that Rachel of Treehouse Knits and I co-hosted. The response to that blew us both away. It blew me away. It was my first cow and I could not have been more thrilled with the response. It was just amazing. And the mittens, oh my gosh, you guys, the mittens that were knit were just incredible. Incredible. If you haven't, uh, if you're not a member of the group, of the Ravelry group, please go over and um, join the group. Take a look at the FO thread, the finished object thread for the Cal. There's about 30 or 40 entries in there and amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, absolutely gorgeous mittens. The patterns were amazing. Uh, the motivation that everybody had um, in the chatter thread, everyone was so encouraging and supportive. I, I, we just could not have asked for better. Um, my group was hot, was hopping. Rachel's group was hopping. It was really, really great. So thank you to everyone that participated. Uh, the winners, um, the winners were announced on July 31st. Uh, Rachel and I tried to do a joint Instagram live, but again, for some reason, it didn't work. I will figure that out. That That's a whole other conversation. Um, but one day we will figure that out. Maybe one day we'll even podcast together. That is, that is a hope that we both have. So we'll see. But um, the winners of the Cal 
were announced on July 31st and Rachel did her live Instagram story and then I, I went live after her. So um, it was just, it was really, really fun. Thank you to everybody that joined in and watched us go live that day. And I do want, I have the names of the winners here. I know everybody, gifts have been awarded and everything and, and received, um, so that's really good. But I did want to just name, name those amazing ladies here and uh, I'm going to try to insert pictures of their mittens here somewhere. So let's see if I can figure this out. Oh, just an aside. Um, another really interesting thing that's happened this summer is my neighbor, I want to say this before I forget, my na our neighbor um, next door, they are here for the summer and they have two sons. The older son is 11 years old, his name is Simon, and he basically has sat down with me over the course of a few days and taught me iMovie. <laughs> this 11 year old boy, and I shouldn't be surprised because kids are ridiculously tech savvy right now, but I said to him, I saw that he had just gotten a new MacBook Pro and I said, Simon, um, can I just ask you one or two questions? And he said, of course, of course, sure. And he says, well, why don't I come over and, and you can ask me what you want. So he comes over and this kid proceeds to put on this presentation basically and teach me how to use my computer. He says, you've got this amazing machine. You've barely used it. He says, you shouldn't be podcasting on your phone. You, should be, you shouldn't be editing on your phone. You, you, you should be using your computer. And he's so right. It's the reason I bought the computer, is to use iMovie, because I know that the options are far superior to what I can do on the phone. So let's see. This is going to be the first episode that I edit on iMovie on my computer. So we'll see how many bells and whistles I can throw in. I may throw in too many just because I can. <laughs> Um, just because I'm having fun so we'll see he also taught me how to edit the sound so hopefully I'm crossing lots of fingers this episode. <laughs> hopefully everybody will be able to hear me a lot better I am NOT wearing a mic but again I think we've remedied the problem so let's see how it all works so anyway back to the cow the winners I did again like I said I did want to announce the winners here because I, they so deserve the recognition. So in the chatter thread, I've got lots of notes here. So in the chatter thread, the woman, the, the winner, I'm sorry, the winner was D. Lee, who is Debbie. Congratulations again, Debbie. <laughs> I know you've already received your prize, but I had to say it again. And she knit the Blooming Happy Mittens by Kathy Lewinsky. They were absolutely stunning. Again, I'm going to try to put a picture of them here. If it doesn't work, then I might just insert the picture. We'll see, either way you're gonna see it, but they're absolutely stunning mittens, so congratulations again. And I did all of this with Random Number Generator. And the winner in the FO thread was Debbie Knits 500, and her name is Debbie, and she knit the Happy Camper Mittens by Kerry Maylie. So congratulations again to you, Debbie. And those mittens were amazing amazing and it was the first pattern published by Carrie and she had she very very graciously gifted a copy of the pattern to Rachel and I um, thanking us for such a great cal thank you Carrie for participating thank you for the gift of your amazing design it's just amazing it's beautiful and I can't wait to cast them on I think when the weather cools off <laughs> I, I I am knitting, of course. I mean, there's a lot of knitting in front of me to share with you, but I just can't. I, I, I think I'm slightly mittened out. Nah, no, I'm not. Because <laughs> I have a pair. I have a mitten whip here to show you. But the point is, I will be casting those on this winter. I can't wait to do that. So thank you again, Carrie, Carrie for the pattern. That was very, very generous of you. And yeah, so again, I just wanted to... I, again, I have said this already that the gifts have all been awarded and everything, uh, but I did want to acknowledge them here on the podcast. Uh, I know hopefully they're watching. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> Hi, Carrie. Hi, everybody. Hi, Rachel. Um, so thank you again to everybody that participated. It, it was We really had a great time. And... I had such a great time that I am very, very happy to announce that I am going to be hosting 
my own cal i'm actually going to be hosting two <laughs> why host one when you can host two people um i really had a great time i decided i've been thinking about this for a long time i've you know thrown out little hints that i might be doing it and i was thinking about doing it in earlier episodes but i i'm i'm pretty confident now that i can pull this off on my own thank you rachel for holding my hand and showing me the ropes and it was even at a point once where I didn't even know how to um, lock a thread on Ravelry. <laughs> had no idea how to do that. So thank you, Rachel, for all of your coaching, for all of your help. Um, so yeah, let me um, gather a couple things and then we're going to talk about the new Earth Tones Girl Cals that are coming up. Hang on one second. So, you guys, I bet you can probably guess what the theme of my cal is going to be. Hmm. I'll give you one, one, one guess. Socks! <laughs> Both cals are going to be about socks, and I'm so excited about this. Um, even my face, I can see my face is getting all flushed. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, it is called the first cal. Let's talk about the first one. It is called the Falling Leaves Sock Cal. I kind of coined that myself. I was rather proud of the name. <laughs> I'm so goofy today. Um, sorry, we drove in last night and I think I'm just a little punchy still from the four hour car ride. But anyway, um, it is called the Falling Leaves Sock Cal. It is going to start September 1st and run through November 30th. There will be prizes awarded at the end of each month, and oh my, I've got some beautiful prizes lined up for you all. Um, I'm not going to talk about those now, probably in, I'm going to hopefully do another episode right before the Cal starts, so I will show you some of the prizes as incentive um, during that episode, but right now I just want to go over some of the details for the two cows and show you some motivation some little things i've already started to do and then we're going to get into what knitting i have done so let's keep going so the cow i've got all my notes right here there will be ravelry groups um ravelry threads for i'm holding my little pencil here there's going to be um chatter threads and fo threads i will hopefully get those set up uh, by the time this episode comes out Whips will be allowed. Um, I don't see why not. Uh, they're going to be sock cows. So as long as you've got, you know, you don't have a whole pair of socks and you only have to do the toe on a sock. Um, and you've got a, at maybe half a sock done and you've got some to go, then absolutely please include it. Um, the one thing though, the one requirement, which may make a lot of people wait and start on the first is the main requirement is that you knit one pair of socks each month for the duration of the cowl so hopefully that'll be three pairs when you're done feel free to knit as many as you like the more pairs you knit the more chances to win and the it is again the theme is falling leaves sock cowl so all of the yarns will be fall colors i want to flood Instagram with fall colored socks, oranges and reds and beautiful golds and yellows and browns. Bring it on, deep olive greens, just let's do it people. I have got so many beautiful yarns to show you from so many different dyers. Um, again, I'm gonna save that for the next episode so you can have some more inspiration. I'm going to be showing you um, some of the yarns that I've chosen to work on for myself for the cal i'll be showing you those on instagram so you will have time to order don't don't feel like i'm going to leave you kind of in the lurch you'll definitely have time to order these yarns um different yarns before the cal starts so but oh my god beautiful it's all about the indie dyers and the incredible incredible colors if you're on instagram go and have a look um for example a, a lot of the yarns that i'm going to be using for my color from legacy fiber arts and i'll go into that in just a second but sixth and seven fibers there's dragon horde yarns yarn cafe creations um artistic lily there are so many beautiful 
indie dyed yarn, indie dyers out there. So go and check out their Instagram feeds for some inspiration. So pair of socks each month, fall colors. They can be scrappy socks. They can be, you can have contrasting cuffs, heels, and toes. You can do plain vanilla socks. You know, I just noticed that the light is changing. It is a very rainy gray day here today. So um, I'm sorry if the colors are gonna change throughout. Hopefully this isn't too dark. Um, you can do plain vanilla socks. You can do textured socks, whatever you like. And I'm also going to be throwing up, not throwing up, but putting, making suggestions for different sock designers. Um, Mina Phillip, who is the knitting expat, has a two series actually of two collections of sock patterns that are beyond vanilla. And by that, instead of just stocking it the whole way through, you can do a very simple textured pattern on just the front of the sock. So that may be an option for you. So you get to play around with a little bit of texture, little mini cables, mini lace, things like that, um, without having to go all the way around the sock, just on the front, just a touch. You can do it just on the leg, whatever you like. So it sort of sky's the limit with what you want to knit. The goal is just to have them in fall colors. Um, wow, it is getting so dark in here all of a sudden. Um, I don't want to turn that light on behind me because it's going to be, it's an odd light and it'll just throw the color completely off, but I'm, I'm holding my notes up. So if I'm looking off screen, I apologize for a second. Um, there's some beautiful cable socks also by the On The Hill socks by the Crazy Sock Lady. That's another option. And I'm gonna show you, I'm actually knitting the fingerless mitts by the same name and they're beautiful. The pattern is so, so simple and so beautiful. There's also a cable pattern by Tracy uh, of the Grocery Girls. And I'm going to link to these indie dyers and to the patterns on the Ravelry group. I will try to also link to them in the description bar down below, just so you have a place to start. And if there's any patterns out there that I don't list, whether it's on the Ravelry group or here, please feel free to um, tell us what you're working on, obviously. Um, link us to other patterns. There's tons and tons of them out there that I probably don't even know about and would love to know about. So let us know. Uh, what is what else is out there? So there's also some lace patterns um, The mercury socks and that's by Kimberly Droter. I believe I'm saying her name, right? They are that's a free pattern Very simple lace design if you haven't done lace socks or lace in general that might be a good starting point for you um, and there's also a series by Danny of little bobbins. She's also on Instagram. There are the Cyril socks Rita and Forever and Always. It's three patterns and I think it's, I don't remember the name of the collection. Hmm. But and again, it'll be down in the description bar down below. So that's just a little taste, a little tip of the iceberg with various sock patterns that uh, you can use. And wow, this is so dark. I hate how dark this is. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. This will be a slightly darker episode. Um, Anyway, so, yeah. I'm sorry guys, the light is just throwing me off. Um, so I've talked about dyers, I've talked about, there's also blueberry waffle socks, there's Hermione everyday socks, there are a lot of different options for you out there. And in terms of technique, again, sky's the limit with that as well. You can do two cirques, which is my method of choice, my knitting method of choice. Uh, you, I will also refer people to and add links to the tutorials that I did. So you can do magic loop, DPNs, top down, toe up, whatever you wanna do. I think I've covered them all, top down, toe up. You can do short row heels, drop heels. And I had a question from Cindy. Hi, Cindy, if you're watching, I did not forget you. Um, Cindy has requested She's asked for help with how to use two circular needles with a drop heel. And that, it's, it's, it's different than the way you distribute the stitches on the needle is a little bit, it's not a little, it's very different than a short row heel. So I am also going to be recording, hopefully this week, it's not gonna be a very long video, but hopefully this week I can record a short video tutorial for you on how to apply two circular needles to a drop heel sock. 
So stay tuned for that as well. I'm picking up my notes because it's pitch black in here and I can't see a thing. Um, so again, we're gonna do prizes. Um, we've had some prize donations from Legacy Fiber Arts. Those are those are on their way. Thank you, Sue and Chelsea, so very much. And Paige Miller from Frame and Fiber has also donated a prize. Wait until you see that. I, it's She sent one for me, um, and I really, really want to keep it, but I also want to share it. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I have two. So one is to give away, one is for me to keep, and I don't know. I think I'm going to have to keep it because it's so beautiful. But I'll just show you that in the next episode. Thank you, Paige, so very much. You're amazing, and I miss your face, too. <laughs> and... Also from Natalie from Remembrances Pottery, she will be donating a prize as well. So thank you, Natalie, if you're watching. Hi, Natalie. And wait until you see those. Oh my gosh. Beauties, beauties, beauties. I am so excited. Um, what else? So the hashtag is going to be um, the Falling Leaves Sock Cal. I'm not sure if I'm going to do 2018 or just Falling Leaves Sock Cal for now, but that's a minor detail, but I will definitely confirm that and let you all know. Uh, hopefully I will be doing this again next year. I think this may be a recurring cal for me, so or at least some type of sock cal in the fall. Absolutely. Um, so that is the hashtag, and double dipping is fine, poly dipping is fine. I know that there is the box of socks cal, which is a year-long cal that Kristen of Vullenvine does every year, so feel free to jump in and out of that. I know that the grocery girls are also doing a year-long cal. So again, dipping in and out is totally fine with me. I Again, I have no problem. And again, whips are allowed, but it, as you see, because the theme is fall colored yarns, it may be easier for all of us to sort of have a big kickoff party on September 1st with our socks. Um, so those are the details for the sock cal. So again, all of this will be written out very clearly for you in the Ravelry group. Um, so stay tuned for that. And I want to show you, you know what, I'm just going to jump right in and show you what my sock is going to be for the sock cal. How I'm opening this baby. So here it is. Wait until you see this sock, guys. Oh, just amazing. Let's just jump right in. Here is a half finished object for you. And this sock is named after one of my favorite candies in the world, guys. I really, I'm so upset by the color and the quality of this video today. Hopefully I can tweak this. Um, but are you ready? Are you ready? Here it is. Look at that. This is the Candy Corn Colorway by Legacy Fiber Arts. Oh, look at that. There's a little more room this way. It's just, again, the light is not doing it justice, but it is absolutely beautiful. It looks like candy corn. It's all the colors of candy corn right here. And do you know, do any of you remember the little, there's like a pumpkin shaped candy corn? Do you remember that? It's a bright orange pumpkin with the little green stem. So there's a little tiny little bit of darker flecks in here that look that remind me of that also. So this is again Candy Corn Colorway by Legacy Fiber Arts. I've used my contrasting, the heel, the cuffs, heel and toes is my usual go-to Malabrigo sock in the natural colorway. So this pair I will be wearing. I don't care what temperature it is. <laughs> I will be wearing these on September 1st when the cal kicks off. And the ball, here's the ball. Oh, look at that, you guys. Look at that color. Look at all of those amazing speckles. Just gorgeous. See, the light just changed again. So you can get a little better color here. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm going to try to insert. I took some pictures of me knitting this on the beach, um, actually stills of the sock on the beach. So I will try to insert a picture here because the color will be much, much better. And I'm hoping there's enough of this left over. I think there will be enough left over for me to maybe get a pair of hand warmers or fingerless mitts out of this. Maybe a hat? May not be enough for a hat, but definitely some fingerless mitts to go along with this, so or to be made out of this. So that is my first um, half-finished object for you for this episode. 
And it's my usual pattern. It is 64 stitches on a, it's a two by two rib on the cuff, 64 st stitches, the fish lips kiss heel, um, on a 2.25 millimeter needle. That is my go-to, don't have to think about it. I just knit and this is what happens. I love it, love it, love it. So let's put this down and leave it on the blocker. Prop that up. We'll just stare at it, look at that. Now this, I know that Sue was knitting the Sally colorway, which is from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Sally is one of the characters in The Nightmare Before Christmas, and that was her Halloween colorway from last year. And she did a similar, she did her contrasting uh, cuff heel and toe in their vanilla bean colorway. And she also did it in the blueberry waffle pattern. And this kind of yarn, this beautiful speckled yarn looks gorgeous in that pattern because it's textured enough that it doesn't take away from the yarn it actually enhances the yarn because the speckles really pop on the on the texture within the pattern so that could be something too if you wanted to try uh, i've been working on the waiting for henry socks and i absolutely love it but it feels like you're knitting the pattern it's a paid for pattern so i don't want to give it away but you're knitting and then there's a change in the pattern and you knit and there's a change in the pattern. So it, it feels, I wanted something that was really going to go. That's why I decided to just do this in the plain vanilla. So yes. So here we go. I just keep holding it because I love it so much. It's gorgeous. <laughs> so anyway, let's keep going. Um, I'm going to pause for one quick second and then we're going to talk about the other cow. Hi guys, I'm back. Okay, it was just getting too dark and I had to turn the light on in the room. It's an overhead light and oh my gosh, I was tempted to go back and re-record everything that I did, but I think I'm just going to keep going. Um, I hope you guys don't mind. I do apologize, but I'm just going to keep going. I really thought the light would hold in the room, the natural light, but it was just awful. So let's look at the sock again now that the light is a hundred times better. Oh, oh my gosh, look at that. So much better, you guys. So there is the sock once again. Look at all of those gorgeous speckles. There's even some purple in there. It's just, just beautiful. The fish lips kiss heel. I love this heel so much. And there you have it, you guys. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe the light. Should I record it? I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. It'll be okay. It'll all be okay. I'm not a professional. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not gonna worry about this. So let's keep going. So now, second cal is going to be, drum roll. <laughs> I am so silly today. The second cal is going to be the mini sock garland cal. I am very excited about this too. And we are going to be knitting these you guys little mini socks this is kind of now now the light is blowing out I, I can't win today <laughs> I just can't win so this is there's my little tag and okay these are okay let's talk about the goal of the cow first and then we'll talk about the yarn so the goal is to knit a 24 sock 24 mini socks for a sock garland you can display those however you like. You can display them as a garland. You can put them on, make them as a wreath, however you would wreath, 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 however you would like to display them. But the goal is to knit two socks per week for 24, I have this all written down, two socks a week for 12 weeks. We will have 24 socks at the end. Now, there is there are actually 13 weeks until December 1st, so you have time to knit more if you see fit, if you want your garland to be longer. Um, but the minimum that I'm going for, again, it's totally up to you, the minimum that I'm going for are 24 socks. So I can't wait. I really, really want to have these hanging in the house. I think it will be absolutely beautiful. Um, if I can churn out a couple more, We'll see what happens. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lock myself in. Um, 
but hopefully I will be able to get my 24 done right along with you. I'm very excited. So I have a few already knit up. Let me pull these out to show you. And here is number one. Here is number two. <laughs> and here is number three. Aren't they just gorgeous? Look at these, you guys. Look at these. Can you imagine these hanging all over your house? I want these all over my house. I want a whole Christmas tree out of these. I want these everywhere. They're so quick, they're so small, they're so easy. I think it's very doable. You can, if you really have the time, you can do one of these in a day. So sky's the limit with how many you can knit. Um, it is really, really up to you. I'm hoping to do more than 24. Um, but yeah, aren't these pretty? I just love them so much. So now the yarn, the pattern that I'm using, so we've talked about the goal, two socks every week for 12 weeks, more if you want to because they're technically 13 weeks between now and December 1st. I don't know if that scares people or not. I just realized that. Oh, okay, I just realized why it got so dark. I could now hear the rain. It is pouring outside. Um, but at least I know the light is not so bad if I need to turn on my overhead light. This, this does kind of work. You can see me. Here I am. I'm so happy to be back. Have I said that already? Okay, I'm rambling. Let's get back to the point. So the pattern that I'm going to be using is by, is the mini sock. Uh, I think it's just the mini sock, baby sock by Legacy Fiber Arts. Of course, I'll put that down here for you. And this is, let's pop this off. This tag is actually from their... The yarn, oh, I'm saying everything at once. We're using the mini sock pattern by Legacy Fiber Arts. You can find the pattern. It is a free pattern. It is on their Ravelry group. Uh, and I know it is very referred to a lot. So if you go to the Ravelry group, it's right at the top. But uh, I am going to request permission to retype that within, or actually I probably just link it. I think that's just cleaner all around. I will link it in the chatter thread for this cow. So there'll be lot two two cows going on, two chatter threads, two FO threads. So the pattern will be linked there and it is done, I'm just gonna turn this around, it is done with the drop heel. So you get lots of practice and this is the reason why I'm going to be doing the tutorial if any of you out there are using the two cirques. So you will be able to see how to apply the two cirques to this type of heel construction. Okay, to the gusset, the drop heel, etc. So, and again, you don't have to, if you want to use a short row heel, feel free to do that. You can mix and match, you can do whatever you like. You can do some with short row heels, some with drop, drop heels. That part, I have, there's no rule on that. It's whatever makes you happy. And this is a great way to stash bust your minis. I have more minis than I can possibly knit in a lifetime stored away in the closet over there. This, These minis, the mini set that I am going to be using is by Legacy Fiber Arts. This year is their third year that they are going to be doing the an advent calendar and or yarn vent calendar as my daughter coined the phrase last year. <laughs> and so I am going to be using their minis from their first advent calendar the very first one that they did so here they are this is and these tags were on the original packaging which i actually happen to have here here is ball this is ball number four that's the next one i'm going to knit up it's just look at this beautiful so that's ball number four here is the little tag and this is how they were originally packaged just like this so I'm saving all of my tags, and I've got a couple of ideas, and we'll go into that uh, as we get closer to um, once the cal is in full swing. You have other options. If you don't have these, you can make these. I think you can buy these cards from like Michael's or Joann's and then just stamp them yourselves. You can write on them yourselves. If you, you have kids, you can have your kids draw the numbers, which would be really nice. Um, I also have another option, but I will share that with you later to use charms to number charms for, to hang from your, um, to use number charms to hang from your sock to mark, 
uh, which number it is. And if you don't, you don't even need numbers at all. If you choose not to have numbers, you don't need to do that either. Now, the only thing that I did a little differently, and I did not create this. I saw Tracy from The Grocery Girls. She was doing mini socks, and this was her idea to have a built-in or a knitted in little loop so that you could just go ahead and hang your socks. If you don't want to do the loop, you don't have to. Um, let me just show you what that looks like without it. I'll tuck it in. And there you go, there it is without. And you can just use uh, clothespins to hang it on your line. If you're attaching it to a wreath, however you want to do it, it's just to give you another option. I liked the option of the loop. If you wanted to hang them on a Christmas tree, you can also hang them by the loop onto your garland, onto the line, whatever you want to do. This is just another option and I will include a tutorial on how to do this as well and I will refer you to um, to Tracy. I have to find the post. I don't think it was ever in, I don't think a full tutorial was done on it but I know that they talked about it in one of their old episodes. I, I couldn't tell you which one but I will try my best to find it and um, I will write up for you what I did for this. So. There you go. Um, what else? Um, now I'm doing this again. It is my main motivation for doing this is early Christmas knitting, early Christmas prep. I want to do something Christmas themed every year. I'm just putting my little tag back on here and I want to do something Christmas themed every year. I want to do garlands. Um, there's also a mitten, uh, Advent mitten calendar or mitten garland that's also done. I'll talk about that in another episode too. I know you're doing that, Carrie, and I'm supposed to be doing it right along with you. I'm going to still try. We'll see what happens. Um, so, and every year I fall short. It, it, it Once school starts, things get busy. You've got after school activities, blah, blah, blah. You've it's back to school in September, then it's Halloween, then you've got Thanksgiving, and then it's the mad rush of Christmas and the holidays that you have to get through. And then it's January. <laughs> and very little Christmas knitting has happened. So I am starting now. These are just little, excuse me, little things I would like to have around the house for decoration and things I would like my children to have when I'm no longer here. Um, these are things that will be passed down. I want my kids to remember, oh, do you remember when mom would sit at the table and she would do her vlogmas and the Kira named it yarn vent. Like I want them to have this, these conversations and to sit around the table with their own children and you, your granny used to blah, 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 blah. And, um, I'm getting all, I have an emotional mess. <laughs> Everything makes me cry. I'm crazy. So, Again, I'm doing this so my children have something to have when, when they're older to decorate their homes with when I am no longer here. So that may be your motivation. You may just want to do it for yourselves. Doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter. It's The goal is to knit, knit, knit. That is the goal with, with the falling leaf sock cowl. That is the goal with this. Just to knit, you guys. To share the love of knitting. To share the passion that I have for knitting. Um, to share new techniques with you. So I hope that everybody joins in. Those are our two cows. Uh, I talked about the video. I'm just flipping over my notes. Um, talked about the prize winners. They will be announced at the end of each month. Uh, and they will be, um, I'm probably going to do two winners. One from the chatter thread, one from the FO thread. And what I will do is random number generator. So starting from post two because mine will be number one so starting from post two to wherever we are at the end of september and then from the end of september to october etc 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 so random number generator so there'll be two prizes each month again the more you chatter the more you more socks you finish um the more chances to win so there you have it um yeah, so we'll talk more details and get into more fun stuff, other little ideas I have for you along the way, just other things you can do with the mini sock garland and with the falling leaves with your regular socks for the falling leaves sock cowl. So that's it, guys. We've only covered, we've, we've, I've been talking a really long time and I think we should talk about some knitting now. I did show you one. Let's look at it again. <laughs> There is lots more to show. I do have a finished object and a couple of whips, and um, I'll see you in one second. I do have to say, um, I have to talk about Simon for one more minute. He was watching this kid, 11 years old, 
actually watched one of my podcast episodes so that he could better understand what I'm doing and what I'm talking about so that he could help me edit better. That blew me away. What child would be willing to do that? To watch a podcast about knitting of his own free will so that he could help someone. How generous and thoughtful and sweet was that? Simon, you're the best. I adore you. Thank you so much again for all of your help. Um, and one thing, the reason I mentioned that right at that point was one thing he said to me is he didn't like that I reached up to pause the video and that you saw my hand each time. Even though I tried to sync it pretty well, that just got on his nerves. So I'm now using a clicker to pause my video. <laughs> Not that you need all of that, but I also had somebody else ask me um, if I could record how I film my podcast and how I edit my podcast. Um, that's a big request. Uh, I wouldn't even begin to know how to film myself filming, but I did want to throw in that one little tip. So I do use a clicker to pause now between my videos um, just to make it look cleaner. Simon is all about things looking clean and professional. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> so let's talk, I have an FO, let's talk knitting guys. I have a finished object for you. I was determined to end my the cowl with Rachel with a finished object. I started the cowl, Rachel opened the cowl with beautiful finished sweet nectar mitts and those were by Tannis Lavelli. And I started mine during the cowl, did a couple of other pairs. I think I finished two pairs during the cowl but I never finished my sweet nectar mitts. So I said okay, Here's my pledge. I will have these finished and off the needles by the end of the cowl. And wait, uh oh, just put them on the wrong hand. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on a second. Here we go. I'm putting them on. Hang on, guys. All right. And they're on. And are you ready? Ta da! Here they are, finally complete. And I know you saw these in the last episode, but they now have thumbs. Look at these gorgeous thumbs. Let's turn these around. Aren't they beautiful? I know this is really awkward, but there are the thumbs. There's the pong. There we are again. So they are now complete. All of the cuffs have been the Pico edge. Everything's been sewn down and I love them. Super comfy, absolutely beautiful, and I chose not to line mine, um, at least for now. I may add a lining later, and that's a little heart right there at the top. Isn't that cute? This one kind of came out. It, I did it right, but for some reason, I don't know, I haven't blocked these yet, so that may be why they're still a little weird there at the top. Um, but yeah, so what was I saying? I chose not to line them. Um, a, for the sake of time, that was my biggest motivation. I really wanted to get them done by July 31st, and I knew if I stopped to line them, to do the lining, it wasn't gonna happen. So that was one reason, and I couldn't decide what to line them with. Um, I know Rachel did hers in an MCN, I believe, a merino cashmere nylon blend. Um, and I know that Sue, who was also knitting a pair of these, was doing, she lined hers with mohair, with their mohair, and I thought to do mohair, but I don't, I'm not really a big fan of mohair. So I said, you know what? There's no rush. I don't have to line these right now. So they are unlined, um, but that is okay. So here is the, what the inside looks like with no lining. And again, the floats are short enough that I don't have to worry about catching my finger in any floats when I put them on or take them off. So yeah, these are, they're done. Finished, woohoo! So these will go into my box. I am also keeping a box. I don't know how you guys store your knitting throughout the year. Um, I have a big box, which I'll show you in another episode. And when I finish something, whether it's socks, whatever I'm doing, mittens, I literally just kind of chuck them in the box and the box is in the closet. I know people don't always understand <laughs> how I, what I do with my knits when they're done. Um, as much as I love the finished object and I wanted to have more finished objects this year and I, I am accomplishing that, it's about the process. I really, really do enjoy the process and every now and then I peek in the box and things are piling up and that makes me really happy. So these are going back into the box 
Uh, and like I said, one day I will show you the box. So that is, let's go to my notes, y'all. Hang on. So we talked about our cows. Uh, we covered our mittens, and I showed you my first half object. So let's talk whips. So again, my half object I've already cast on uh, barely. My daughter had karate practice today, so I cast on, that's as far as I got with the second sock. Pretty pathetic, but those will be finished very, very soon. Um, the other, I have two other whips to share with you. Um, I wanted to show you the Henry socks again. So hold on, I'm just gonna go off camera for one second. So here they are. I don't even remember where I was on the last time. I didn't get much farther, uh, further, farther. Uh, my ends are all still kind of hanging out. You know what, that just looks unsightly. It's like when your slip shows. <laughs> Let's tuck those back in. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Let's tuck those in, people. Sorry, my slip was showing. Okay, here we go. So, cuff, leg, heels done, um, the foot, I'm pretty much ready to do, I am at the point just about to do the um, toe. What happens because of the nature of this pattern, it is a three by one rib on the top of the foot, so that really draws it in. So when I try this on, it looks really long, like it should be the right length, but when I try this on I still had a little more to go I think maybe five to ten rounds because I like to knit until I'm at the base of my little toe so that's my that's my marker when I try the sock on it's usually between 75 rounds and 80 um but yeah so almost ready for the toe and I'm actually going to do the toe in this color which is the color within the color work so let's turn this this way so you can really see it. So I'm going to do the toe in this color. So that is my Waiting for Henry socks. And the yarn was a kit from the Hay Sisters Yarn Company. The pattern is the Waiting for Henry socks. I'm blanking completely right now on the sister's name. Hold on. I think I have it in the bag. La 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 la. I've got it right here. Hang on. By Tabitha Gandhi. Uh, and the pattern is here. Hold on a second. Of course, I'm trying to find the first page and can't find it. Okay, you know what? It doesn't matter. The point is, Waiting for Henry Socks by Tabitha Gandhi, who is um, one of the sisters in the from the Hay Sisters Yarn Company and podcast. And if you haven't watched their podcast, it's so much fun. The sisters are, they are so much fun to watch and... They really, really get along, and you can see their relationship in the podcast, so that's really fun to watch. If you haven't taken a peek at that, that is my um, one of my plugs this episode for showing some love to other podcasters. So go and check them out, and that is being stored in my Matter Root main bag. I love this bag so much. This is one of the mini trundle bags, and, and this is, I think, their mulberry, one of her newer colors um colors that she has these bags in and this is just all knit stitches on the bottom i love this bag i bought this at where did i buy this i bought this from matter root main from christy christina at maryland sheep and wool this past may so there you go that's being housed in there and so that is that whip and then my other whip is let me move some stuff out of the way I really do have to turn this camera around. There's so much stuff in front of me right now. Um, my other whip is, I am knitting these. Oh, let's zoom in on that. These are the On the Hill Fingerless Mitts by, and these are by Kate Litton, who is the Crazy Sock Lady on Instagram, Crazy Sock Lady Designs. And she also has this design in sock, in a sock pattern. Um, same design coming down the foot, so it's the on the hill socks. And I decided I wanted to do another pair of mittens, which is why I said I'm not mittened out yet. So I wanted to do another pair of mittens, and um, I think this is for the right hand I started. Ah, it's for the left, hang on. Let's put this on the left. Hang on one second, let's get this on. And there it is, you guys. Isn't that beautiful? Let's straighten that out so it looks nice. There we go. 
there it is look at that isn't that beautiful and I am using my that is my little row counter um, I talked about these in an old episode um, I basically tie knots in embroidery floss it's not too bulky I love doing it with embroidery floss because it's not too bulky and it sits perfectly on the needle it doesn't get into my get in my way it hangs and I've I most times I've weighted the bottom I put a little bee just for decorative reasons on the bottom I didn't bother with this because I knew this was going to be a pretty quick knit I've already started right in here I've already started the increases for the thumb look at how beautiful that is it's so clean so here they are and the this pattern as you can see is cables this is a two stitch cable this one is over six stitches but it's a really interesting design the way she has this section I'm not gonna give it away it is a paid for pattern um, but it's really beautiful and uh, so if you love this pattern you have the option of doing it as fingerless mittens fingerless gloves or doing it as socks so this is what I'm using and this is really old this is deep stash diving this yarn is bugga yarn by sanguine I know I'm gonna say it wrong hang on hold on a second by the sanguine griffon sanguine griffon this yarn has been discontinued so I am sorry I know that's probably I know that is very annoying when you see somebody using a yarn but you may be able to find um, somebody may be selling this on Ravelry so go into um, go and look somebody may be willing to trade or sell um, this on Ravelry and this colorway is the longhorned beetle so that is what I'm using um, it's a really it looks a little blown out here again again because of the um, artificial light but it's a really deep wine color like that little peak in there is more what the whole skein looks like the whole ball looks like it's really really rich it's really beautiful so I will be sporting these on the hill in Rhinebeck this year hopefully hopefully again, more fingers crossed we have a really cold um, or at least cold enough that we're snug and warm in our woolens but not absolutely freezing because I've actually been up to Rhinebeck and it's been freezing I mean like you almost can't even be outside it's so cold so hopefully we're somewhere in between and I didn't I don't have a lot of this yarn this is all I have so I'm praying that's the ball there I'm praying that I can get through the, I think the pattern calls for 44 yards or 45 45 ounces 45 grams I'm sorry start again pattern calls for 45 grams so I think I may just make it this is 44 <laughs> if I don't make the cuff too long at the top and um I was very very sparing with my tail here so I I think I'm gonna make it I'm a little bit of yarn chicken going on here I'm gonna win I'm gonna win so there you go that is my that is my other um work in progress you guys so I think I've basically covered everything that I wanted to talk about in this episode. I've got a couple of other um, future knits on the horizon, but we can talk about those another time. I don't want this to be too terribly long. Um, I have one other whip, but I'm going to hold off and share that with you later. I want to get a little more of it done before I show you. And I do have... One thing I do have is a little bit of sewing to show you. This is really quick, so I'm going to show you those. I, I'm always reaching for, I've got multiple projects, as we all do. Multiple project bags. And I always try to keep a crochet hook, like a mini crochet hook, which is by Susan Bates. I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, it is essential. I have to have this thing in my little notions pouch in case I drop a stitch in case I need a crochet hook a, a, a cable needle it's a multi-purpose tool I love this thing and a pair of scissors so I have my little crochet tool my rescue tool whatever you want to call it excuse me I have a darning needle for weaving in ends or whatever I need that for um, and then I also have a pair of scissors and a tape measure so and I also put in stitch markers, if little things, normal, normal stuff that's in everybody's notions pouches. But the problem is I usually have one notions pouch and I move it from project bag to project bag. 
So on the days now when my mind is not all together and I forget to move it, I'm sitting in the car waiting to pick up the kids and I suddenly need a tool and I don't have it. Annoying. <laughs> ah, that just gets on my nerves. So I decided, you know what, let's remedy the problem. I wanted to find a really quick pattern to make really small, but not too small, but small notions pouches for myself that I could whip up pretty easy. And I found the perfect pattern. There are these. So this was the first one that I sewed. Um, and this one has, let me just show you the inside. This is my little pouch here. And it does have raw edges on the inside, but I didn't have a problem with that because this is just for me. But if I wanted to gift one of these to someone, I wasn't loving the raw edges on the inside. So I dug around a little bit. And this is sort of a, a mashup of a couple of patterns. Um, a Spoonful of Sugar has a pencil case tutorial. It's this, it's, and this is basically, I used her tutorial for this and used two squares from a charm pack. Now in, in the quilting world, a charm pack is pre-cut fabric that are five, it's a, it's a stack of pre-cut fabric that is five inches square. So you get a stack of those, sometimes anywhere from 30 to 40 five inch squares that come packaged together by a particular fabric designer. And these, um, I think the name of this particular charm pack was Little Apples. Can't remember by who. I'll try to put that down here. But anyway, so I used um, two five inch squares and then I just found, again, two five inch squares for the outside and two for the inside. So I found two that matched and it's perfect. It is the perfect size. Here's my little zipper. I wanted something that was in the center. I absolutely love it and there is so much in here. I have tape measure. Here is the little tool. If you guys don't have these, they are amazing. You've got this pointed end here if you need to use it as a cable needle. You have the hook on the other side if you need to pick up drop stitches. It is small. It has got the little divot for your finger right in there. I love these things. I bought these. I used to find these in stores. This is by um, Susan Bates. Used to be able to find these at Michael's. I couldn't. I ordered a pack of about eight of them from Amazon. So I'm not trying to take any money away from any chains, anybody, but I just bought a bunch of these. They were about a dollar. $50.60 a piece, and I now have one in each bag. So I've got that. I've got my folding scissors. I also ordered a bunch of these. I think it was like a pack of 10 or 12 of these little scissors, folding scissors, also on Amazon. Got my little key ring there. And then I have a binder ring, and you can find these. Hold on, I got a little thread attached here. I bought these binder rings. You can get these at Staples, and they open up just like that and then they snap back into place and I keep all of my stitch markers um, progress keepers everything is stored on these and then it all fits oh and here's my darning needle so everything goes right in ta -da, ta -da. everything goes in and I just bought the tape measure I think I got this at Joann's for three dollars or so uh, and everything slides right into my bag and zips up, ta-da, and we're done. So again, this is the first one that I made. I played along with that, and then I made two more. Ha, 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 oh, wait, there's a thread. Okay, how do you know that you're a sewer when there's threads on everything? So I made two more, and I decided now to get, I had some of this tape. Uh, it's a cotton twill tape, but it has, um, a ruler it's ruler this ruler print on the ribbon on the tape so I decided to use some of that um, to be a little pull tab so you can pull down there it's open and there you go I actually realized should I put it on the other end it doesn't matter I just absolutely love it so this is my little bee fabric and I made it easier for myself this time I just got um, matching fabric so everything matched I didn't have to worry about lining anything up and this particular pattern is different from this one this pattern was by um, under dog under the desk is the name of the design company I, I think her name is Erica uh, and this is her 
notions pouch, but it's no visible seams. So it's a little more involved. Again, here's my tape measure and I needed it to match because I like things to match. <laughs> so I will pull out, here's another tool. This one's in yellow. See, I like things to match because I'm crazy. Um, I haven't even taken the tape measure out of there. I mean, the scissors out of the pouch yet. And my darning needle and I've got my ring. No markers on it yet. But if you look inside, let's turn this inside out here. There are no, there it is guys, no visible seams. Let's look, let me show you the other side. Hold on a second, let me push that back out. Look at how clean that is. Look at where the zipper, you don't see the end of the zipper. It is just amazing. And where you sew, so when you look in, Again, everything is nice and smooth on the inside and the seam is on the side of the bag, right here, where you sew um, the hole closed in the lining. This pattern is fantastic. It's so quick. I don't know, it's for an adventurous beginner. Let's put it that way. Um, I don't, it might have confused me a little bit had I not had any sewing experience, but if you are adventurous, you can knit one, of, you can sew one of these. Really no problem. Let me just put my hand back here for perspective because it looks huge <laughs> like this. Um, and it fits perfectly. It's the perfect size to go in. This is monkey fabric, sock monkey fabric that I had in my stash. Um, my fabric stash is just as big as my yarn stash. It's ridiculous. So there you go, you guys. Little quick little project. I will link to the patterns down in the description box. Um, but now I have Notions pouches in every, as things are dropping, I have Notions pouches now in every project bag. I'm happy, this makes me happy. Such a simple thing, <laughs> but I also love seeing these and I did get a little bit of sewing done so that made me really, really happy to do. Um, it's instant gratification, these are so, so quick. I use a walking foot on my sewing machine. Hi, Joanna, that was just for you. I know you've discovered your walking foot. And I'm going to Joanne's to pick out your wedding present. <laughs> Joanna now has announced her engagement to her walking foot. Go and watch her latest podcast episode. Um, it is Stitching the High Notes. Um, Joanna is the host. She is jo Opera Joe on Instagram. So funny. Um, she also does a little a mini video with her sister, which was hilarious. I could not stop laughing. I have a younger sister and it's so funny so I could totally relate but um she's madly in love with her walking foot and I did these with a walking foot it's so easy everything lines up if you don't sew that may be lost on you a little bit but if you do sew you know exactly what I'm talking about amazing so these little pouches will also be gifts for the cows wink wink <laughs> <laughs> so start your needles guys start your needles these will be thrown into one of these little pouches will be shown will be included in every prize packet for my winners for each month you want one don't you you want one you want one you want one <laughs> okay so I think that's it um I have no idea right this second how long this podcast is I think it's a little long so I am going to wrap it up that is pretty much everything I wanted to share with you for this episode. Um, there's way more. There's more in front of me that I wanted to talk about, um, but I will save it for another episode that will not be four weeks from now. Scouts honor. Scouts, scouts, scouts honor. I don't even know. The point is it will not be four weeks from now. I will definitely be back um, before the cows kick off. We will be doing an episode probably... Um, 28, 29, somewhere around there of August, right at the end of the month. So stay tuned, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I had such a great time. I was a little scattered. I'm sorry again about the light. I'm not gonna worry about it. I just wanted to get back in the saddle and get this episode out to you. Um, so there you go. Uh, everything will be in the description box down below, all of the links for everything. The Ravelry Group's threads will all be set up, so have fun. I hope that you join me for these brand new cows. I am very excited about them. You know my passion for socks, big socks, mini socks, 
it's gonna be a sock fest. This fall is going to be sock, sock, socks, even more than usual. So thank you all so much for joining me today. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing a little time with me. Uh, I hope that you all are enjoying the last lazy days of summer. And um, I will see you hopefully in a couple of weeks. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, I'm also going to be doing a giveaway soon because I've hit I'm over 2,000 subscribers now on my YouTube channel. Oh my God. I'm really truly blown away by that and I want to acknowledge that properly, but I will save that for another episode. And also over 3,000 subscribers are followers on Instagram, which also blows me away. I am way behind on a giveaway as a gratitude giveaway for that as well. So thank you to everyone that is following along with me and enjoying this making journey that I'm on. Thank you all very, very much. And I will see you all again very soon. You're all the best. Thank you very, very much. Bye everybody. Oh, wait, where's my clicker? Hold on. I got it. Bye everybody.